I come here today with great sense of urgency and passion over the fact that we need to extend these unemployment benefits that expire January 1st. This is one of the coldest spells that we've had in decades in the Northeast Midwest area. And I cannot, I find it unfathomable when it is so cold that the big chill in Washington is that we're not going to extend the unemployment benefits than extending a warm helping hand to Americans who have lost their job through no fault of their own and have been unemployed for more than six months. Where are our national priorities? If we can't help one another be a bridge to get to a job, then what is our government all about? We spend billions overseas, and I support that. We spend billions on tax breaks to send jobs overseas. I don't support that. And I want to make sure that for the men and women who don't have a job today, but are looking for one every day, we help them out. Senator Coons, the gentleman from Delaware, just spoke and said, today it could be your neighbor, tomorrow it could be you. Well, I think we're going to be unemployed unless we don't start focusing on how to help the middle class. The middle class is shrinking and unemployment is stagnant. We've got to lower the unemployment rate. It's, I want to make sure, though, that during this time, while we look at how to create jobs, we provide a social and continue to provide a social insurance program that helps people when they're laid off through no fault of their own. My own home state of Maryland is now, right this very minute, affected by 23,000 people. That's 23,000 families that have now lost a modest benefit, which averages out to about $313 per week. That enables people that while they're looking for work to be able to pay for their housing, pay for their food, and pay for their heat. Now, there are those who are implying that if we provide uh, unemployment compensation or assistance, that we're going to encourage sloth, laziness, laggardness, that they're going to kind of lounge around, uh, not looking for work. Let me tell you the story about Western Maryland. And this isn't Barb Mikulski. This is reported in the Baltimore Sun and in the Washington Post. We have a community uh, called Washington County. The unemployment rate is 7.3%. Just a few years ago, we had a good humor plant. They made ice cream. Now, I visited an ice cream plant. Everybody's happy there, and they were busy producing good humor that was sold all over this country. Well, two years ago, it closed. 400 good-paying jobs left Hagerstown. That's the bad news. The good news is a co-op dairy farmer came in, purchased it, and is now producing milk and ice cream, but in smaller amounts. Guess what? They received 1,600 job applicants for 36 openings. They had 36 openings and 1,600 people in a small rural county applied for those jobs. 44 people for every job available. Now, Hagerstown has a great sense of patriotism. They sent many men and women to fight and die in the two wars we've just fought. They have a great work ethic. They need to be able to have the opportunity for jobs. Don't tell those people in Hagerstown or in Salisbury or in Baltimore or throughout my state that they're too lazy. Maybe we're lazy. Maybe we don't get the job done, okay? One of the quickest ways to jumpstart the economy if we want to, is to be able to pay unemployment compensation. All the data shows that unemployment goes, unemployment insurance adds about $1.60 uh, back into the economy. So, Madam President, I'm going to create a sense of urgency. And I say to my friends on the other side of the aisle, 
Over a decade ago, you had a man run for the President of the United States who won. His name was George W. Bush. And he campaigned on something that I thought was so interesting. And maybe I look forward to actually hearing more about the way he was going. It was called Compassionate Conservative. We understand that people are conservative. We understand that people are fiscal conservative. But the message was we can be compassionate conservatives. So I say to my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, remember the compassionate conservative ring of a decade ago. And remember that man's father who said we need to be points of light to light up America. So I'm going to say, let's be a point of light here. Let's add a beacon of hope to the uninsured and let's, I mean, to the un unemployed and be able to help them out. And don't be critical of them if they can't find work. Let's look at us and how we can have a job strategy. Let's have an infrastructure bank that creates jobs in the construction industry. Let's uh, eliminate those tax breaks that send jobs overseas and bring the jobs back home. Let's do the tax extenders that get people working again. Let's put people back to work. Pass the unemployment compensation. Let's pass some job creation bills. Let's get America working again. And the way we do it is we get to work and pass the unemployment compensation bill.